Hi everyone, I'm Brenda Butner. This is Bulls and Bears. Let's get right down to it. Here they are, the Bulls and Bears this week. We've got Gary B. Smith, Tobin Smith, Eric Bowling, along with Brad Woodhouse, who is president of Americans United for Change. Welcome to everybody. Okay, Toby, will this stimulus plan work? Will it get people back to work? Well, you know what? What it really does is it keeps government people at work. It keeps union people at work. But it does not create a job. And that's the part that I think I get on my Facebook page now every day. Hundreds of complaints from real human beings say, have our, our leaders lost their minds? We, we have gotten to a point now where we are, are, are creating jobs, if you will, in the government or in, in unions. And as if that ever made our economy grow. I, I'm, t I'm just befuddled. All right. Befuddled Toby. We'll go on to Brad. You tell him. Is he wrong? He is wrong. I'm just amazed at this notion. Uh, of course, a stimulus package has to spend money, and government's going to be the one to spend it. But construction jobs, building schools, repairing roads, those are private sector jobs, maybe government money. But that's exactly what we need right now. That is the type of stimulus that we need. And yep. besides, President Obama said, save three to four, save or create three to four million jobs. We do not want states to lay off government employees right now and have those oh, people. Oh, heaven forbid. Uh, going, well, I mean, you know, if you do that, you're going to cause a further downward spiral in local uh, in local economies, and that's not what we need right now. I, the other I, option, okay, of course, is for it, states to raise taxes. Eric, we don't want you, that you don't look befuddled. No, no, I'm not befuddled at all. Here's what the Dem Democrats will have you believe, that the house is on fire. We've heard this analogy a hundred times. The house is on fire. You better throw some water around it. It doesn't matter where you throw it. The problem is this fire hose, this big trillion-dollar stimulus package is spraying water all over the block. It's not even hitting the house. Twelve percent of that stimulus package is going for those roads and bridges right. that you talk about and those schools. Here you go. See this thing right here. here, you want to spend money, put some money on a credit card, make people spend the money, make the consumer spend it in stores, you'll create jobs and you'll spark the economy, not this <laughs> shovel ready stuff that may be ready or may not be ready. Okay, Gary B, what do you say? Well, I, look, I, I think as opposed to Toby, this stimulus package will create jobs. I mean, you're going to have, uh, you know, whatever, a trillion dollars sloshing around. You're going to have some jobs created. Right. My right. issue with it is it's just not the most efficient or effective way. One, most of these jobs almost by definition are temporary. Once uh, Milwaukee builds their tennis courts or whatever, what, what happens next? They build squash courts and racquetball courts? No, those jobs go away too. Most of these jobs are far off. It takes a long time for any construction project for them to plan out, to source materials, et cetera, et cetera. And three, it's not the most efficient way. We already have businesses in place. At the minimum, cut corporate tax, cut small business taxes, so the businesses we know work can thrive and grow. Well, Brad, tax cuts have succeeded in the past, uh, but you think spending is the way to do it? What? Well, look, there is a mix of tax cuts and spending in this package, but if tax cuts were the only solution or were the best solution, I mean, the streets would be flowing with honey right now with all the tax cuts that we got uh, during, the, during the Bush administration. I mean, we do need to try a different path at this time. And look, there are going to be tax cuts in there. Certainly the deal they're talking about right now may be 40 percent tax cuts. We think that's uh, a little high, but it might be the, the, the price of getting a package, getting it done, and getting the stimulus into the, uh, into the economy. I mean, you can't spend $800 billion without creating jobs. And, and you know, the question is, I guess, Toby, what kind of jobs as, as well? I mean, on Friday, the president also signed an executive order that says that um, he would prefer that any yeah. government spending um, for, uh, for contracts actually go to union, union workers. What's that going to do? I think I'm going to break out my Benny Goodman albums. You know, I, I feel like we've, we're back in the 30s and we're going to try to replay the same tune and the same movie that did not work. I mean, remember, we had two recessions in the Great Depression. One was when we threw a bunch of money for two years and, yes, we, we, we created some jobs. As Gary B. points out, though, those jobs all went away because we decided to quit spending. So if you're going to create temporary jobs, you only create temporary help. The idea is that somehow those temporary jobs will turn permanent. That is bogus. It hasn't worked then. It won't work well, now. Well, um, uh, Gary B., the jobs may be temporary, but will the spending be? 
No, no, obviously not. I mean, th no. this is, you, you know what's going to happen, Brenda. This is going to be a, a now, a, so, so they've added a trillion dollars to the budget. Th that's going to be the new high water mark. And so when they go through their next budget, if they pass this, this trillion dollar thing, we start from a trillion whatever and then work up. So this is, you know, and Toby made this point last week, this is a way to expand the government, to, to, to force through whether the voters want it or not, uh, nationalized health care. So this is all going to happen, sure. and we're moving step by step closer to socialism. Well, Brad, all spending is not created equal, right? Well, that's right. But look, you, you, no one wants to create a baseline of this type of additional spending. I mean, it can't be it can't be sustained. President Obama hasn't proposed to do that, and no one. But that's uh, and no usually the way to. Washington works, isn't it, Eric? Yeah. Well, let's talk about the way well, Washington works. Well, but you can't works. run so, these. You can't run these type. You can't run these type of deficits. I mean, you're talking about uh, deficits mm -hmm. in the trillions of dollars. You can't run these. Uh, on on forever. It's needed right now to stimulate the economy. Look, uh, this yeah. package this package does include some. Here, here's how here's how government investments. spends your money. Here's how co Sorry. government. This week we found out the congressional oversight panel showed us that we wasted 78 billion dollars of TARP one of the 350. Their words, not mine. We wasted 78 billion. You got a trillion dollars. I wonder. That's about 30 percent. About 25, 30 percent. If they go ahead and waste 200, you want them wasting 250 billion dollars of your taxpayer money? No. Keep it out of there. Keep but out of Washington. Well, 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 I, I agree we shouldn't waste more of it on, on corporations and banks, that's for sure. Well, uh, <laughs> but, but, well, well they're going to get better at it when they spend on something else. Good, Gary B, go ahead. Well, let me. Let, well, no, no, no. You're, you're trying like, oh my gosh, corporations are bad. Corporations, <laughs> no, 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 no one said the they're job bad. Job creators for crying out loud. No, no one said they're bad. You, you, somebody else was making the point that much of it had been wasted through TARP. I mean, I agree. We shouldn't spend more money uh, after bad on on the banks. I mean, we need to grow this economy from the bottom up. And doesn't that mean Toby usually uh, giving money to the to the people who do create jobs? Well, of course, risk takers uh, actually are the people who create jobs, but since most people in government have never been a risk taker except with uh, anybody else's money, what would they know? Here's the dirty little secret. The dirty secret is the other financial crises in history have shown us that tax collections fall off the, 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 you know, the proverbial cliff. And we've already seen, we, when we track sales taxes, for instance, we're down almost 18% in sales tax collections in many parts of the United States. The next shoe hasn't even dropped, guys, because the one trillion in the stimulus gets added on to another trillion of, of taxes that we don't collect, and that is going to be the one that's going to take us over the top. All right, quickly, Brad, last word. 15 seconds. Well, look, well, look, consumers need to be spending. I mean, that uh, that sales tax collection uh, statistic is an issue. I mean, we need to put money in the hands of consumers. This stimulus bill does that in large measure because a lot of it does go to people who are hurting the worst. Okay, we'll get more uh, on this in the next block. Don't worry, because pro-union demonstrators are storming the Capitol this week. Just what are they screaming about? These Someone here says there. what they're demanding is downright undemocratic and could knock the out the economy for good. Of the labor movement's right.